Hi friends, welcome back to yet another episode. What we're gonna be doing today is finding the no parallax point of your lens. How to do it, how simple it actually is, and why it's valuable. Stay tuned. Let's just get right to the nuts and bolts of it all. You have any one of these lenses, right? Maybe you've got a 85 millimeter, okay? Maybe you've got a wide angle 18 to 35. Either way, whatever lens you have, finding the no parallax point seems to be this very mysterious thing in the world of panoramic photography. I, I remember back in the day when I first got started and I was so tripped up by this, I thought it was some superhuman math I had to figure out. It is just so simple. What I'm gonna to do today is show you the fastest, most effective method to find the no parallax point for any number of your lenses. So it doesn't matter if you're shooting 200, 700, 400, or eight millimeter. Either way, finding the no parallax point is an exact science that will work with any method. Here's one thing to remember. Let's say you're shooting with an 85 millimeter lens, right? That no parallax point could be anywhere in between here. What is the no parallax point anyways? Siri comes up with some crazy, like, I don't know. Let's see what Siri has to say. Siri, what is the definition of no parallax point? I found this on the web. Straight from the horse's mouth, right? This is what the no parallax point is described as via the internet when you search it. In an optical system, the entrance pupil is the optical image of the physical aperture stop as, quote, seen, end quote, through the front of the lens system. The corresponding image of the aperture as seen through the back of the lens system is called the exit pupil. If there's no lens in the front of the aperture, the exit pupil location inside the lens has two of the aperture. Yeah. So I just want to know what the no parallax point is and I still don't know what that is after reading that. And I just want to find it on the piece of Note All Ninja equipment that I just purchased so I can start making money shooting 360s or go out into the wilderness and start shooting large panoramic images with the no parallax point intact on my piece of equipment. That's all I want to know, right? You know, there's definitely minds like that that want to know the exact science of what it is with the lens in relation to the equipment and na 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 na. I'm not that guy. And maybe there's others out there like me as well, just like you, who just say, man, I just wanna shoot pictures, right? You feel me? So here's the thing. Basically, the no parallax point is the entrance point that the eyeball, right, sees the image. That can be anywhere from the front of the lens to somewhere in the middle maybe, anywhere in between, right? If you have a big old fat telephoto lens, it might be back here somewhere. You just don't know. One thing to keep in mind too is that the no parallax point isn't in relation to the equipment. It's actually the lens. It has everything to do with the lens. The no parallax point will be found in the lens. Why is that valuable to know? Because if you have a specific piece of equipment and a longer focal length, you may not have enough rail length on that piece of equipment in order to get to the no parallax point. So it really does matter when we look at an online catalog and we see in our series head, you know, the R20, the R1, or the Note All Ninja 3, or the 6, and we think, wow, I've got a lens and a camera and I can just put it on there. That doesn't always work because of how far you'll need to slide on that rail in order to get to that center point of the lens. So a lot of times when you look on our catalog and you'll see, well, why do I need to buy an M series line if I'm gonna shoot at 600 millimeters? Well, that's because you need lots of rail, right? To go back on the piece of equipment in order to get to the no parallax point, which is relative to the lens that you're shooting through. Now I'm gonna show you real quickly how to find it with a piece of equipment. Today we're gonna to use the Note All Ninja 6 and I'm gonna show you how to find the no parallax point. And this works universally across the R series heads that we have, the Note All Ninja 3, the Note All Ninja 6, the M series line. If you're using the Mecca, single access or dual access, it doesn't matter. Whatever piece of equipment you have, maybe if you're not even using the finest equipment in the world such as Note All Ninja and Fanotech makes, maybe you have another piece of panoramic equipment. Finding the no parallax point is going to be the same thing. Okay, you've got to find it this way and you got to find it this way, right? Basically, it's that simple. To the left and right and front and back. And I'm going to show you how. Here we go. So let's do a little bit of behind the scenes as well. So we're gonna walk you through, not just standing here in front of you, but kind of what it looks like 
from the camera's point of view, the, the thing that you're going to be looking at, either through your viewfinder or your LCD screen on the back of your camera, right? So let's take a look at the equipment right here. And so this is my Note All Ninja 6 sitting on top of, you know, my tripod, right? The first thing I want to do is make sure that it's leveled off. So obviously I'm going to lower this down so I can see nice and clearly. I don't want to be on my tiptoes or trying to figure out where the no parallax point is from a difficult perspective. I just need to find it. So I got my easy leveler on here. You probably can't see me working. It's off camera right now. All right, so it's level, right? Now that this is leveled off, we're going to do a little shake, shaking and shifting here. Come on now. The Note All Ninja 6, what you have here, you have this grid right here and the very center with your spirit level and the cross section across the spirit level. If the center of your camera lens looking straight up and down is looking directly into the center of that spirit level, you are on your way to finding the no parallax point. That's step number one. How's that done? This right here, this locking knob on a Note All Ninja 6 or a 3, loosen it up just a little bit, just enough to slide the, the equipment back and forth, right? So as you can see, if I'm moving it, it's, that's not in center, right? If I'm turning it around, that's, that's not in center. But what is in center is if I move it all the way up until the center of that is right in the middle of my viewfinder, I tighten this up. Always make sure to tighten up. Now that you can see that it's directly in the center, and even as it begins to turn, it rotates directly in the center. Perfect. Now on to step two. Finding the no parallax point has a powerful dynamic, and this is the big one. So I have found that it is easy to take this, the center screw of a tripod head, right, and align it with something in the back that's a little bit larger. So it just barely covers, right? There's a little bit on each edge. So as you move it, when it's out of parallax, you could see, see that screw moving, the head moving? That is telling me that I have not found the no parallax point yet. And that's done by sliding this forward. Remember, in sliding it forward, I'm gonna find the no parallax point of this lens right here, right? So I loosen this knob up and I slide it forward. In doing so, I will begin to change where the center rotation is. So you can see now already, just by sliding that up, that center screw is nearly remaining without movement in the center of that other rod back here, right? That screw is remaining nearly in the center of this simply by sliding this along the rail up and down, right? Now I do have a stop plate already built in here and I'm gonna show you where that is. So, hear that bump? That's it. Tighten this camera plate knob down right here. And now you can see that I have perfect no parallax point right there. No movement. I'm ready to go. That is how you find the no parallax point of any lens. Straight through the column and then finding an object in the foreground that is not moving and an object in the background that is not moving and making sure that when you rotate, given that rotation, that the front and the back object remain exactly as you see it, whether you're head on or to the left or to the right. So that is the system and the workflow that I use every single time I might change out a lens on my camera body and I am attempting to find the no parallax point. As you can see, it doesn't need to be this long drawn out process where you're taking 45 minutes to find it. Guys, it's really that simple. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Listen, if you love what you are seeing here on Note All Ninja, hit the subscribe button below, ring the bell, do all that fun stuff that you know you're supposed to be doing as viewers on our channel. We love your support and we're so thankful that you're here watching. And share this video with a friend. If you know that they're starting in panoramic photography or are doing something along these lines and need help finding the no parallax point, you get to sound like a genius because you have found this video and you can point them in this direction. We hope that this video is valuable and 
easy to follow with a good tip for you to be able to shoot this kind of imagery and do so without the frustration that comes when you don't have the no parallax point. So thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Go enjoy a cup of coffee, go enjoy some photography outside, go shoot the lights out of something and enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. Peace.